Hello, I'm Bruce Lorenz and this show is called Bruce on the Loose. We're here on location at the new fire station on College Street. Matt Hiscock, the service director, oh, also the safety director. You kind of do a little of everything little around bit. town. A little bit. Joining us and Matt, how has the new fire station assisted the city in responding to, to needs? Well, it's really worked out very well to date. You know, the work that uh, Chief Linder and Assist Assistant Chief Potter put into it uh, really has come to fruition. A lot of planning, uh, a lot of uh, late nights, early mornings, figuring out what we needed and, and how to implement that new station has really come to fruition. I think uh, the crews and the staff have enjoyed uh, the new building. Uh, we are still learning a little bit of aspects about it like you do in any new facility, <laughs> but it's been well received by the department. It's enabled us to do some things that we haven't uh, really had the ability to do in the old station on, on North Lyman Street. And it's really been well received by the community. The communities come out, I think they not only like the aesthetics and the looks of it, but once they get a chance to tour it, get inside, they see all of the work and effort that went into the plan. And so it's really done, uh, done great things for us. As we talked before with the chief, it really didn't happen overnight. It was a, it was a long process. And as time went on, the city and you realized that the facility on Lyman Street just didn't cut the mustard. That's right. You know, that facility served us very, very well, but it wasn't really designed for a full-time or a combination-style department like we are and have been for more than a decade. So it was time. Uh, we really outgrew it many, many years before we actually moved out of it. Um, but this facility and the lessons we learned from the old facilities and the lessons we took away from other departments who had upgraded their facilities uh, really went forth uh, in terms of creating uh, a one-of-a-kind, state-of-the-art facility for our folks and our community, and we're real, real happy. That, that's real important to uh, to look at other uh, locations. Sometimes, uh, and schools sometimes do this, they look at other uh, facilities and see uh, something that would enhance the firefighting and EMS uh, uh, you know, protection. That's absolutely right, Bruce. We, we visited many existing fire stations. We talked to other departments who were similar in the design stages of their uh, facilities to look at. Chief went and looked at things on his own. I went and looked at different facilities on our own. We went together to more facilities. We met with architects, designers, builders. So we really put the due diligence into uh, what was coming of age, if you will, in the fire uh, service, uh, what was important in terms of aiding EMS services, all of those things uh, we looked at and we wanted to put into our facility. Sometimes budgets restrict what you can do, and sure, that did happen sure. on occasion with some of the ideas we had, but we're real happy with our end result. The city uh, purchased three acres, I understand, $500,000, and uh, it was a very, very strategic uh, move. And, and now you have coverage in the north end with a fire station there and, and this fire station. So you really kind of covered your bases. We did. <laughs> uh, you know, the positioning of a fire station is vitally important, I would say, if not the top uh, issue or element in a decision to make in a new facility, it's got to be in the top three. Uh, and this particular property really did come together, as you mentioned, Bruce. The, you know, we had uh, one resident and property owner approach us who had a pretty significant lot. Um, it backed up on existing city property here at Memorial Park. And uh, we thought, well, we couldn't do it with just that one property, but if we added multiple properties, uh, that could work. And, and to our uh, luck and advantage, uh, neighboring property owners approached us about um, their willingness to sell to the city and, and have a fire station in their neighborhood. And uh, this is what you get when people come together and we were able to collaborate. Um, we were able to reach uh, fair market pricing on the property mm -hmm. and it's been wonderful sense it certainly is uh, you know a, a very good opportunity for the fire trucks to get out and get to the fire at Lyman Street it seemed like it was very cramped and very difficult here you have some space and I'm sure the insurance companies uh, it note that in their in their in their rates Bruce you're right on you know one of the uh, disadvantages of old and existing facilities is they really don't have the network of transportation that you need for response uh, uh, capabilities and response efficiencies uh, that was an important aspect of, of the selection of this particular property too while across the street we have uh, Isham Elementary and the uh, maintenance facilities for Wadsworth City Schools we don't have permanent residences in a narrow street 
and which to back out on. The, the other issue that we have is we made sure that we had a large apron so that trucks and uh, emergency service vehicles could get off of College Street, turn around back into the facility, do the things we need to do, pull out of the facility without blocking or encroaching on sidewalks or those kind of things. So um, that was an important aspect of this particular location also. The network to send the uh, fire trucks out is also here. The uh, dispatch, dis center. dispatch center, and she said that was a real big advantage to have that here as well. It was. You know, for years we were looking to uh, remove the dispatch center from the basement of City Hall, the basement of the police area of City Hall, and uh, we knew that this was an opportunity to uh, bring together some um, advantages in terms of economies of scale and get the new dispatch center built and get them above ground and in a new facility where their workspace uh, was good. In addition, I thought it was vitally important and an opportunity to bring those folks in dispatch who serve fire and EMS, just as they serve the police department, uh, together a little bit more. They had always kind of been separated and I thought it was an advantage for us to get these folks into a new facility where you would see firefighters, EMTs, paramedics, mm -hmm. as well as police mm -hmm. officers officers on a regular basis and so it's been a great advantage for us. Several communities have difficulty recruiting fire people, EMS, etc. Uh, how is Wadsworth doing? Are we, we keeping a good force in, in, uh, in operation? We are. We're in better shape than we have in a long time in terms of staffing. And I think this facility has helped us on the fire and EMS side, quite honestly, during the interview process, whether it be full-time employees or part-time employees. Uh, we make reference to the new facilities. We make <laughs> reference sure. to the community's investment in its fire and EMS departments. And uh, candidates like that. Not every, uh, not every community is offering those types of amenities. Not every community has the ability or the willingness to invest in their departments. Uh, candidates, when they come to see us and interview us, see the new building. They see the equipment we invest in. They meet our people during the process when we hold interviews here. Uh, those have all been advantages for us. We're doing real, real well on, okay. on staffing at this point in time. Well, that's good to hear. No question about it. Well, since you talk about future firefighters, maybe we should go and look at Safety Town. That would be Except great. Some of the young people growing, growing up, and maybe they want to be firefighters too. That would be great. We'll be back in a second. We're here with Matt Hiscock, part two of our show, looking at the fire station, now Safety Town. And, and it's really important to educate the young students about how important it is to be safe on the, on the sidewalks and in near streets because we, we certainly don't want to have those, those people injured or, or worse. You're absolutely right, Bruce. You know, our community is blessed to have a program like Safety Town. Uh, it's been going on for more than two decades. Um, uh, the quality, the opportunity for young people to meet safety force personnel, the idea of building relationships with those folks in our community, uh, vitally important in modern public safety work um, with all of the issues and challenges we have in society to get started early with making relationships. And that's what the program's all about. So Safety Town has been wonderful for our community. What's great about uh, this opportunity that came about here at the fire station is we acquired three acres and uh, we had some room to do something more. And so we had looked for years to uh, not use a parking lot at a school facility or, or really come together where um, children in the Safety Town program get to see a facility, get to be around a facility for a little bit in, in terms of the fire station. And, and we had an opportunity, we explored the opportunity, and we built our first permanent Safety Town, hopefully our last permanent Safety Town. And uh, actually this year we were able to use it in the inaugural uh, Safety Town program, and it was a big hit. It's really nice to see all the students in Wadsworth City Schools. I mean, you know, you separate Franklin and, and uh, certainly Overlook and Isham. Here, they meet, may meet kids from other buildings, and it's really a positive situation all the way around. It is. It's great. You know, not only do they meet um, uh, children of their same age who are participating in the program, but the program's really unique because they have mentors, and the mentors are mm -hmm. just students a couple years older than them, and so each student is paired with a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, they go through lessons in regards to safety here out at Safety Town. They also have classroom work that goes on at Isham that they go through. So it's a, a really extensive and great program where it exposes them not only to uh, safety uh, items and public safety issues and gets them to meet people in uniform and, and know them and build a relationship, but you're right, it does get them a chance to meet 
students from other areas in the district that they may not meet, kids that go to other elementary schools that they may not meet. It's really an awesome program. I would think also if they, you know, come across, they're in a crowd and they get lost or there's something out of place, they would go forward and then tell a policeman, hey, something's not right here or I'm lost. You know, you know they, they would they would go ahead and extend and get help. You're right, Bruce. And and that is what it, what the primary goal, I think, of Safety Town is and a really great aspect. It's uh, finding a familiar face, building a relationship. Sometimes those familiar faces are in uniform and when mm -hmm. you need help, when you're lost, when you have something happening, seeing that friendly face that you remember from Safety Town changes the dynamic of the interaction and that's a real benefit for safety force folks it's a real benefit for the citizen and the children because it gets them the help easier and it takes that level of anxiety and fear that goes on in emergencies and brings it down and that's important so i may be uh, out of date here but i used to think safety time was like a couple days you know they, they just went outside and said what's watch you getting in the street and this and that but it sounds like it's really, really grown. It's still a couple of days. Okay. But but they do do that. There's there's what I would call a practical part where they're mm -hmm. out here learning different items about the rules of the road and uh, traffic signs and signals, understanding bicycle riding and oh. crossing mm -hmm. crosswalks on your way to school. Um, they are talk, talking about all those aspects, but they also have a classroom portion mm -hmm. where they're reinforcing some of those safety lessons. They're talking more about emergencies, how to dial 911 what to expect if you did have to dial 911 um, whole bunch of different public safety topics what do we have behind it looks like some buildings here Matt can you tell us uh, what these uh, may be I can I can so safety town is is really designed as an educational pavilion which is behind us but also a roadway a miniature roadway network which would uh, give safety towners a challenge and different exposure to different areas whether it be crosswalks or signage or traffic lights and those kind of things. In, it, in order to give it a realistic feel, we also wanted to put miniature buildings in there. Mm -hmm. And so there was a double-edged idea to that particular program, and that is sponsors, which pay for the buildings, mm -hmm. um, can provide funding for the park so we can expand it. We don't have everything we want yet. Um, it was quite expensive to build, so we needed to offset some of those costs. So these sponsor buildings um, help us provide a small stream of revenue every year to do that. We've actually got two more buildings that we're getting ready to build and put out on the park, and we've got a couple other vacancies. So we reach out to the community, we reach out to potential sponsors and see if they want to be a part of our project. So if there's someone out there that might be interested, they, they they certainly could contact uh, the city I and mean, possibly your office and that we could go ahead and sign them up. Right? That's absolutely right. right. Any sponsors, we're always welcome to talk. There's other opportunities for sponsorship, whether it be roadway naming or, or other items here at the park. So all they need to do is contact City Hall, the service director's office, and uh, we'll get in touch. What is the reaction of the students during this time? They, they probably, uh, knowing uh, you know elementary students they probably get very enthusiastic they do they do our uh, school resource officers as well as our uh, our partnership with the school folks um, they are always excited to talk about the experiences they have with safety towners because i think they bring that enthusiasm to it it's exciting at a new place everybody r likes to ride their bikes uh, those kind of things mm -hmm. so it's a really great opportunity very very well received I'm sure the uh, the safety forces also appreciate that they know that these students have a little background and they probably probably feel that this is very educational and again it's showing that their jobs are very very important. They do. It gives us an opportunity not only to expose students to safety lessons in a new facility but it also gives them a chance to see what a police officer does, what a firefighter does, mm -hmm. what a paramedic does and talk to those folks and so we hope out of this process it encourages mm -hmm. folks maybe to explore careers in the safety forces. It's a little ways off for those little right. ones but yeah. it's, a, it's a great exposure opportunity. And we We've broken down barriers too. A lot of women get involved in the safety forces too. Well, they do. We see more and more of that on both sides of the house, whether it be police or fire and EMS. There is lots of lots of female uh, participation in these careers, and it should be. Um, uh, you know, a good police department, fire department, EMS department should reflect the communities, and uh, that's the way to do it with both males and females in the career. Matt, I really learned a lot about Safety Town here, and certainly I'm sure the parents uh, appreciate it very much too, so they don't have to go over things. And of course, p 
young people listen a lot more to officers and other people than they do their parents. It's all about the presentation <laughs> and sometimes it's who's presenting whether it be your parents or right. immediate family or a stranger in a uniform right. sometimes you uh, pull away different lessons from those discussions okay we'll be back with the third and final segment in just a second we're here with our final segment of bruce on the loose we're here at the 9 11 memorial and how did this come about matt so bruce um obviously with the tragic events of 9 11 uh, which touched not only America, but the fire service and, and uh, police services in particular, we again thought we had an opportunity. We didn't have anywhere in the city that uh, really uh, paid tribute to the folks lost on that particular day, memorialized the events of, of our country on that day. So we had an opportunity to, um, with some space, to probably incorporate a, uh, a memorial. We wanted to do it close to Safety Town because we wanted to make sure little folks understood uh, what happened that day. We wanted to make sure that it remained prevalent in the minds of our fellow countrymen. And so um, this was an opportunity really to uh, pay tribute to that. The fire service being uniquely involved with the loss of 343 firefighters on that particular day, um, we wanted it to be a part of this new fire facility. And so um, with a couple of contacts, we were able to uh, acquire an actual piece of steel from the World Trade Center. Um, while after the events, immediately after there was readily available steel from from the tragedy in New York um, but for many many years you haven't been able to acquire that steel uh, this particular item behind us is a floor connector piece and it came directly from the FDNY's cache of, of remaining pieces of metal so we lucked out as a city to be able to acquire a piece of metal this late in the game so to speak um, but we're very very happy uh, to have it and it's an important part if not the center part of our memorial the bravery of the firefighters just is overwhelming. They, they didn't think a second about advancing and trying to save people. Uh, it's true. The, the amazing aspects of uh, the service of the fire service is to put um, others over self. And quite honestly, uh, when you think about or read about or hear about the stories of that particular day, uh, not only in New York, but in Washington and, and what happened on the flight uh, over Pennsylvania. You just understand that there are people in this world who have it right. They, they know what right from wrong is. They stand up for what right is and uh, they do the right thing. And it's an example of uh, what makes us great as a country. Um, the events of those days, while tragic, uh, there are a lot of uh, honest tributes and amazing stories that came out of that day. This is, we're not in a finished area here. Are there other plans to go ahead and expand this, uh, this memorial? There are. So uh, again, here we have an opportunity to maybe uh, raise awareness, but also raise revenues so we can expand on it. We'd like to fill in some of the areas of the memorial that are empty right now with additional statues or memorial items, uh, pieces of art, if you will, to, uh, to complete our project. In order to do that, we need the help from our community. Community. So we have a, a engraved paver program where folks can uh, uh, lend a note uh, of support uh, to whether it be their family or friends or whether it be just a remembrance of that particular day. And uh, we uh, gather those up, um, use those donations and put forth uh, those donations to the next acquisition of uh, a build out here. Uh, those engraved pavers go in what we call the memorial walk, which is uh, goes throughout the memorial. Um, and uh, we hope that we'll sell many more of those engraved pavers over the years uh, so that we can add to the park. Yeah, we walked over a couple of those memorial uh, pavers uh, as we came to this location. What would the cost be if, if someone would be interested in, in contacting the city and going from there? So you can get on the city's website and you look under the uh, safety director's page mm -hmm. and there is the 9-11 uh, memorial page and they have all the cost outlined there. They're mm -hmm. basically uh, depend upon uh, the size of the engraved paper that you'd like to purchase and the messaging that you want to include on that. And uh, there are different 
uh, blanks, mm -hmm. different different areas uh, from what we feel is an affordable, um, something that a family can do in terms of an engraved paper all the way up to a corporate sponsorship. So there's uh, always those opportunities. In addition, uh, it's been wonderfully received. We get a lot of uh, donations, just straight out donations for the memorial. And so we put them to good use, as you can see throughout the, the memorial. We do have some objects in place already, but we're looking to add to it over time. Matt, I enjoy the flags. The uh, flags over reminds me of uh, some of the memorials in Washington, D.C., World War II. What about the one on the right there? What, uh, what would that symbolize? Yeah, so that is commonly referred to as the 9-11 Honor and Sacrifice flag. It is a flag that was designed by 9-11 survivors. It is present at many 9-11 memorials, not all memorials, mm -hmm. but uh, we thought it was important to include it. We thought it was important to have it on its own uh, flagpole uh, stand out. And a, and a memory of that particular day and, the, and those not only who we lost but the survivors of that particular day. And the American flag in the middle and what's that flag underneath it? The, the flag underneath is the POW MIA okay. flag and right, so right. as a city in Ohio we must fly those flags together that is okay. in our statutes and it's an important memory of it. Again this being a memorial again many of the folks we lost on that particular day were veterans and uh, so it's just the right thing to do. And the one on the far left? That is our department flag. Okay. So when we uh, uh, embarked on the new station, I asked the chief and the assistant chief to come up with a flag for our department. We hadn't had one that was specifically designed for our, our department. So that flag is a uh, our patch on a black background, and uh, we fly it here in honor of uh, all the men and women who serve our community in the same fashion that those we lost on 9-11 serve their communities. I imagine that that's a little uh, gesture, but the firefighters, I'm sure, uh, appreciate that and the memorial saying their their position is very very significant they do they they honestly uh, have really embraced this space I think they look after this space they understand the importance of this space and I think it does honor them not only them in terms of the folks we lost on that day but those who currently serve their communities and that's them included in that group so uh, it's an important space for our fire and medics so it's not a finished uh, finished work here, uh, just more work for you to do, but who, who has helped you coordinate this and had the idea for this memorial? We had a lot of, lot of people. Again, I, I would lean heavily on Chief Linder and Assistant mm -hmm. Chief Potter who uh, really mm -hmm. uh, believed in this particular project, wanted to see this to come to fruition. But we had lots of help, everything from the mayor and city council uh, who were very supportive of, of this moving forward, down to community members who wanted to see this happen, who reached out to do us. You know, an important aspect uh, of we couldn't be where we are today uh, is without the, those who built it. McComas Landscaping, a local community uh, uh, company who did an awesome job, who continues to come out and take a look at the memorial, memorial take a look at aspects of their work and other ideas, provide us with uh, future ideas. So it's been a great partnership with many involved. If you get some contributions along the way, might you do a, a, a small project to, to add to what we have here? Well, that's exactly what our hope oh. is, Bruce. You're right. So, so we don't have, we have some thoughts and ideas right. and where we want to, you know, what we want to do and what we do, but we're open to, mm -hmm. to different ideas. So depending upon the project and, uh, and what the cost may be, will enable us to do different areas. But as you look around, you can see where uh, with some smaller projects and public pieces of art, we have some room to do some things. So we're looking for ideas, we're looking for uh, donations and sponsorships to help us with those ideas. Um, it's an exciting time. So our citizens, uh, you know, aren't shut out of this uh, procedure. They could go ahead and come and say, hey, I have an idea, or I was somewhere visiting and they had this and bring that forth for, for your office. You're absolutely correct. So one of the things that's going to be happening in the coming weeks is we're going to be adding plaques at the different aspects of, of the memorials already, whether not just in front of the World Trade Center piece of steel, but each one of the birch trees have a symbolism and a meaning to them. We're going to put some plaques out that we were able to acquire based upon donations from citizens so we're going to do that um, the fire department bell that exists out at the property here in the memorial we're going to talk a little bit about those aspects of things but we hope to add different there are other traditional memorial art pieces that you find at, at uh, memorials like this that we'd like to add over time but everything has a cost to them and so yeah. we want to work within our budgets and and we need help from the community in order to add to this particular project 
I think Wadsworth is very unique, uh, Matt, in the fact that you'd mentioned the chief and fire chief, the mayor, city council. There's a lot of collaboration. You don't do and make decisions on your own. You get help from a lot of different people. And as a result, people and citizens appreciate that because you've had that discourse. I think that's right. You know, we don't operate in a vacuum in, in local uh, political governmental entities you have to work together and collaborate in order to make something uh, an idea on a piece of paper come to fruition and so we are blessed to have a working group of folks who uh, have good discourse have good discussion about ideas and then uh, set a goal and move forward on that path and uh, a little part of that is me making sure that that happens and I'm really really happy to be a small part of projects like this we appreciate all you all you do for the city of Wadsworth, and certainly it probably changes each month. There's some new uh, edicts from the from the state. Uh, I don't know how you keep up with it. Is, is that your law enforcement background probably helps a bit? A little bit. It's <laughs> been a challenge at times, uh, wearing two different hats here. But yeah. I've I've really enjoy it. I love our community. Uh, raised my family in this community. Uh, hope to be a Wadsworthian for a long, long time. It's a great place to live. It's a great place to work. Uh, I really enjoy it and have a great group of people I can lean on to get things done. Hopefully we'll get a service director right around the corner and you can just concentrate on the safety forces. This has been Bruce on the Loose and we've learned a great deal about the fire station, safety town, and our memorial. Coming up on the, the uh, in September, we'll have 23 years of that, that day in infamy. Thank you very much for viewing. watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.